Hi there everyone, welcome to another Just A Thought. Now today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, if you've been watching our Sunday morning broadcast, you'll know that I am preaching through the book of Mark at the moment and sharing some thoughts about the life of Jesus. And in that, I wanted to ask um, some friends, um, some people that I appreciate, uh, appreciate what they carry of the Lord, um, just to share some insight, to speak into, um, speak into that. Last week we had Pastor Glenn Kahn from Sunrise Church at Hastings shared some great thoughts with us. This week we have Dr. Lisa Adji, who again um, will be sharing some just really great insight with us. And I also caught up this week with my friend, Pastor Bowden Dolly of Celebration Church here in Maidstone. And particularly with what Bowden shared, I thought it'd be really great um, to use that interview and the conversation that we had to form the basis of our Just a Thought today. Bowden shares some really great um, thoughts on Jesus's sacrificial compassion. And I really believe that that will bless you today. I really believe that that will speak into your life today. So here's my conversation this week with Bowden. Enjoy. Right, well, it's really great to be joined today by my friend Bowden. How are you doing, Bowden? Doing great, Leon. Thanks for having me. Excellent. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, I wondered if you could just introduce yourself, uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. So um, my name is Bowden. Um, I am the pastor of Celebration Church. Um, we're a church plant. Um, we've been in Maidstone uh, a couple of years now. Um, we're part of a kind of international ministry of churches um, based out of uh, Harare, Zimbabwe. So I'm originally from Zimbabwe. Um, I've been in the UK uh, over 17 years now. Um, my wife is also from Zimbabwe, Jackie. Uh, but we met in the UK. Um, we have three kids, um, Judah, Micah and Aria, all under four years old. Um, <laughs> so that keeps us uh, young and on our toes. Um, and I said we're a church plant. So what that means is we are uh, a small group of about uh, eight families, um, kind of following what we've sensed is God's call to plant a new expression of faith. Um, and really our heart and our approach is to create a space where people um, who are still asking the big questions, a place for them to belong even before they believe, um, and then kind of do life together as we do that. So that's kind of um, you know, who I am and what we're doing. That's great. Yeah, we're cheering you on. We're just kind of around the corner from uh, you guys, you know, so um, sort of local churches together. So it's been great to be partnering with you a little bit through the Life Cafe and sort of relationally, we've been part of collective as churches together, looking at how we can serve the local area. So it's been great, you know, sort of getting to know you and as a mate as well, which is great. I really appreciate you. Um, just wanted to ask you um, a question in connection with um, some ministry that I'm bringing at the moment, going through the book of Mark and looking at the life of Jesus. And as a, as a pastor, as a, as a visionary, but most of all, I guess, as a, as a follower and a disciple of Christ. Um, who would you say that Jesus is to you and how does that affect your ministry and your life in general? I, I love that question. Um, and it's funny because I, I asked the same question on our Sunday um, <laughs> um, kind of conversation this past Sunday. Um, and I didn't answer it myself, so I got everyone else to answer the question. <laughs> um, so... For me, um, I would say that Jesus is my king. Um, but what does that mean, Jesus is my king? Um, and I will give you an example. Um, when I was a kid, uh, my cousins and I loved wrestling. Um, and so we basically, each of us had our favorite characters, you know, whether it was Hulk Hogan or The Undertaker, and we all had these characters that were our favorite characters. Um, and so you, we, you know, we kind of embodied everything about these characters, you know. Um, I loved Hulk Hogan, so I would draw on a mustache, I'd wear a bandana, and I would do all the moves, and I would pick up all his, his persona. Um, you know, and 
And I admired him. And we admired these heroes um, of our childhood. And okay, maybe you didn't like uh, wrestling. Maybe it was football or something else. But, you know, I think that picture of a kid admiring their hero is such a great example of what, what I mean by Jesus is my king. Um, and so I look at Jesus and I see this hero, this person that I admire, this person that I just, I admire so much that I want to embody. I want to be like him. I want to sound like him. I want to live like him. Um, and I can't help but looking to him and reaching out to him. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, that's such a, a nice and lovely concept, but I mean, for me, it's, it, it's, it runs far deeper than that because what does Jesus kingship ultimately mean, you know? Um, and so, you know, when I think about it, um, you know, and I think of, okay, if he's my king, then we're talking about, you know, the kingdom of God. And we're talking about where, wherever Jesus went, him carrying the kingdom with him. And so if he's my king and I'm admiring him and emulating him, then, you know, I should be doing the same. I, I want to do the same. Um, and then you've got this idea of, of dominion. So where Jesus went, the kingdom was there. The kingdom was present, you know, and, um, you know, you mentioned Mark and, and, you know, when, when you told me about this topic, I, uh, the first thing that came to mind was this moment where he feeds the 5,000. And I think it's such a, amazing picture of this kingship of Christ and that kingdom principle that embodies his kingship, which is love, you know, and love manifested as this sacrificial compassion, not just compassion, not compassion like the world knows it, which is, you know, ah, oh, we feel bad about this situation and I wish we could yeah. do more to help them. That's worldly compassion. But mm -hmm. what we see in Christ is this sacrificial compassion. You know, and and so this the story as we as we know it, you know, Jesus is with the disciples and he says, Well, we've not even been able to eat. Let's go away somewhere. Let's let's move on from where we where we are now. Let's go somewhere a bit more quiet, get some time to ourselves. So there was a clear need. You know, Jesus identified that. You know, probably he was tired, the, you know, his disciples were tired, and he's like, Let's let's go and get some rest. And of course, the people caught on that you know jesus was going to this new location and by the time they got there they were already at the location and so he starts he has compassion for them and he says look they're like sheep without a shepherd and you already see this picture of sacrificial compassion you know there was this need jesus needed rest and they needed to sit down and, and get away from the crowds but he moved he was moved by compassion and then i mean we know what happens next you know, the people are hungry. Uh, the disciples say, well, can't you send them away now? I mean, we came here to eat. Uh, we're feeling quite hungry too, and we don't have enough for everyone. And then Jesus says, why don't you feed them? And again, you see this sacrificial compassion. And, you know, in Mark says that they were in a desolate place. So you can imagine there was nothing around, you know, there was no shops or or, you know, market stalls. There was nowhere to get food. So there was nothing. It was desolate. That's the word Mark uses. And so, again, Jesus moved by sacrificial compassion. And they feed 5,000 people as a result of that. 5,000 people are satisfied. 5,000 people are fed, are taken care of, are loved. You know, and it says at the end of the, of the passage, it says, and they were satisfied. Yeah. So this place of desolation becomes a place of satisfaction. This place of desolation suddenly becomes this place of abundance. This place of nothingness becomes a place of peace and of fulfillment. And it all emanates from that key principle of sacrificial compassion. Yeah. That it's not about my needs right now. And, and I have them. I have my needs. I have my pains. I have my stresses. Yeah. But do you know what? I sense something greater. There's a greater need here. And I'm willing to put aside my needs now to reach out and allow the kingdom of God to manifest and take dominion here. And so, you know, when I look at Jesus and I call him my king, it gives 
purpose to my pain. It gives meaning to those difficult seasons that we face. You know, and, and personally for me, I mean, I mean, the COVID season has been one of the busiest times of my yeah. life. It's been some of the most anxious, stressful times of my life. You know, I'm talking like panic attack levels. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's been a burden. But held at the center of that was this conviction that there are people out there right now that are facing far greater turmoil than I am. And I don't have much. We don't have much as a church. We don't have much as a community. But what do we have? What do we have? We have a hope. We have a faith. We have a belief that the little that we can bring, combined by the faith that we hold, can make a difference. You know, and, and that's really how the Life Cafe came to be, you know. Originally, it was us, you know, walking this journey of how could we plant a church and let's do it with as a fresh expression and, you know, a cafe church kind of thing yeah. and, and do it as a, a, a journey, a missional journey for all of us doing life together. And then COVID hit and we're like, how do you launch a cafe in a lockdown? Yeah. You know, and all of our plans went out the window. And you know, the owners of the building, the, the landlord said, they were the ones that said, hey guys, maybe it's not a good idea to sign this lease. Maybe you should take a step back. And I said, thank you for the grace. But actually, if you're not going to be using the building and we don't have to sign the lease, could you let us use it and serve the community? And it was within two weeks, we had, you know, you guys, the Vine, um, St. Peter's, junction we had a number of churches helping us pull together this community project and since april last year since the first lockdown we've now delivered over 6500 three course meals wow. free of charge to people in need wow. i could not have told you at the start leon that i believed that that was going to happen i could not tell you that i knew that we were convinced that we had this plan and this plan was going to work and you know we had all the pieces we didn't what we had was the little we had in our hands we had enough faith to say let's see what god would do in this place of desolation because we know that however difficult it is for us there is a need out there far greater and it goes beyond the actual meal because now we have access to people we have an opportunity not just to bring a meal but to bring hope to be a point of contact, to let people know that they are loved and why they're loved. And so that's why for me, Jesus is my King. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. I'm sure that will have really spoken to a lot of people. That certainly really spoke, speaks to me. So, you know, bless you guys and all that you are seeking God for in this next season. Um, and I'm sure that you will have some more amazing things for you to do, you know, as you seek to pursue him. But, you know, we are standing with you guys, cheering you on. Um, it's great to be in fellowship with you. And, um, you yeah, know, just God bless you and Jackie and the family as well. And Thanks so much. So I really appreciate it. God bless you guys. Bless you. Bless, bless you all. I can't wait to actually spend some time with you and your, your gathering in person at some point. That will be... Be great. Oh, great. You'd be so welcome. So welcome. Yeah, excellent. Good. Well, thank you so much. Cheers. Cheers. So there we go. I trust that really spoke to you and blessed you today. I'm so grateful to Bowden for sharing with us today. Now, we are going to be continuing looking at the book of Mark this coming weekend. As I mentioned, um, Lisa Adji is going to be sharing as well this week. So it's going to be so good. And we also have breaking bread this week, so make sure you have something prepared for that. But you have a really excellent day. God bless you, and we will see you really soon. Take care.